Hello, welcome to Star Wars Belt Out. I'm your host, Josh Chapman, and today, oh, we've got a full deck, but we've got a different full deck tonight. Matt Mull's not here tonight. He had possums in his roof or something. He was frantically messaging me during the day that he had possums in his roof. Of, he showed a photo of somebody halfway up a ladder, which I don't think was him. I think he's just paid someone to do that, which probably sounds about right. But uh, in, his, in, in his stead, we've got another Sydney sider. Let's put him on first and get him to say hi. First time on this, not the first time on this podcast, first time doing the Mandos, Turbo himself, Matthew Thurban. How's it going, buddy? Ah, thank you. Thank you for letting me join Mand on the run. Uh, I should have worn my T-shirt, actually. I know. You were the first um, one to buy. I received the T-shirt in the mail. <laughs> you, yeah. you bought the defective <laughs> T-shirt. <laughs> I put the Mand on the run artwork on a T-shirt, and I was so sure that it was going to get copy stri- copyright strided. I tried to put a sort of pattern effect on it so it would still look good, but then not get copyright striked. And then Turbo sent me this photo going, is this what this T-shirt's supposed to look like? <laughs> and luckily... It, it wasn't it wasn't up to your usual standards, so I thought something's wrong here. No, well, they'd printed it wrong. Like, they'd been printed to, like, one side as well, which was wrong. And the colours were off anyway, which didn't show up in the Photoshop. And I went, no, that's not what it's supposed to look like. And then I thought, I'll oh, stuff it. I'll just upload the artwork as it is and see if they say anything. Especially if I'm editing, maybe there's less checks. And it went through and you got a nice new shirt. <laughs> it looked all right. <laughs> no, it looks good now. It looks perfect. I'll bring it to celebration. Great. Me too. I, I got one too. Just to show my commitment. Because uh, I was like, Turbo, I'm so sorry. I'll buy you another one. Um, but yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, on, on deck also, Dale. Dale's back. How you going, buddy? Good. How are you going? I'm good. Now, you're um, obviously... Uh, Matt Mull's not here tonight, but he's here in spirit because he set you up with a whole bunch of... like. You've got like a whole home studio going on now in order to record with? I certainly have, courtesy of Matt and say hello to Pete the Possum Man for us. Hope everything's <laughs> going well there. <laughs> the Possum Man. <laughs> we'll find out. I'm sure that we'll, we'll, we'll hear all about it at some stage, I'm sure. I'm sure he's really happy he's being talked about too. Uh, and always, good old Reliable, she's always here. Catherine Neen, how you going, mate? Well, I need to order one of those Manned on the Run t-shirts now. That's yeah. another thing to add to my list of things to do it before celebration. It might not make it in time, but you can, you can, you can try. Try a Redbubble. Redbubble's a lot quicker, and I think it was a few dollars okay. cheaper. Um, so yeah, it took you, about a week. Yeah, took about, yeah. You can get a Man on the Run T-shirt. And I've actually put up the Ewok Premier League mashup design as well, just because I got a few requests for stickers think, for people who weren't at celebration. It's awesome. Like, if you're at Tea Public or Redbubble, you can print your own sticker. And there you go. You don't have to be at celebration. Can can we just say the um, Ewok Premier League logo is awesome. It is yeah. awesome. It's great. It's on point. It's one yeah, of those um, ideas in the shower kind of thing. When I was just kind of thinking, <laughs> of, and I wasn't even planning on doing a sticker and it just kind of popped in my head and I went, oh, that's actually a pretty good idea. And then I was like, you know, as you do that, then you kind of go, oh, can I? Will this work? What go, what what's like a lion? You got Ewok, English lion. Well, it was Ewok, like yeah, yeah Ewok, Return of. the Jedi, fortieth, like Britain, all that kind of thing. Even though there's a conjecture, you know, is it Celebration London? Is it Celebration Europe? But anyway, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> we'll get back to Celebration. We'll talk about that at the end as well because stuff's been happening in regards to that as well. And I've got a Celebration story to go on to that. But we're talking Mandos. We're talking the shortest episode ever. Dale, can you confirm yeah, or deny? I believe it is. I think the second episode, The Child, was one of the shorter ones, but probably around the same 32 minutes or something. But we had a long one last week, so. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, I've got to admit, uh, it's short and sweet, but uh, um, yeah, this week was um, very good. I'm, I'm actually leaning towards shorter episodes now. Like, I was always wishing there were longer episodes, but after last week, I think. Short and sweet is uh, is a winner. That's what they call me. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you were the one, Dale, we got a little chat going and you were like, oh, 32 minutes this week. And I was going, oh, does that include credits? And yeah, it was. so it was probably under half an hour probably when it was all said and done. What 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 about you, Catherine, when you see 32 minutes, do you see heart sink? Or do you just go like, nah, it's going to be nice and and tight storytelling? I don't know, because it could be, you know, 32 minutes 
like, you know, a Ted Lasso episode or 32 minutes of something else. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> you know, but on the Catherine scale, I cried. So, there you, you know, that's a, good, that's a good tick right I've gotta, there. I've got to say, though, to be honest, Five minutes into five five minutes into this episode, maybe even ten minutes, I was going, "Where is this going? This seems a little uninspired. Are we just rescuing some kid who got taken by a bird?" Um, but let's go into it. And, uh, there was I had a probably three or four moments, and there's a huge moment. We'll get to it, but there was probably three or four moments in this where I just laughed out loud at the ridiculousness of some of this. And the first one was for all the Mandalorians training on the beach, like two feet away from each other. Like some are just randomly <laughs> shooting out into the ocean. And did anybody else think that was so silly looking? Oh, it, it should have been like a training montage or something. Uh, you know, they could have easily done like that, montage. but they were standing close. So close to, they were standing so close to the shore again, not learning from their mistakes last time. I, I didn't, I didn't get Who that. Who picked this place? <laughs> I am liking the variety of costumes, though, because I was thinking, geez, I could really rock a Mandalorian costume if I had a spare three, three or four grand or something. It was like it was in like a Mandalorian like outfit generator, like a randomizer on your phone where you hit it and it goes like, you know, <laughs> yeah. blue helmet, green armpits, yellow pants. All right, that's your Mandalorian <laughs> outfit. Um, all right, so it wasn't. I'm the only one who just thought that was a little ridiculous. Or you, Catherine? Did you think it looked a bit funny? Or they're all like, huh, 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 like all out together, uh, like. Huh, 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 huh. Yeah, I was wondering. You know, are they shooting at something at the water, like targets at least? Um, and you're right; they were very close when you consider they're shooting things at each other. And fire. You know, it's one as well. thing to be close if you're doing hand to hand combat. You know, like. Cobra Kai style, but yeah, if you're shooting things, you need a bit more than three feet. Um, yeah, but I have to admit, I was, yeah, that whole first scene, especially considering it was directed by Carl Weathers, come on, montage. Oh, yeah, of mm. course. You know, like good Rocky style Apollo montage. Creed there should have been the mute. There should have been a musical number over it as well, like not you know yes. something a bit bit more jazzy. Or well, I always think of the yeah. montage. The the is it Team America with like montage. Yeah. Team America, got, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the somebody. Everybody like, needs a montage. Yeah, somebody yeah. do that. But <laughs> it'd be a montage. They had a lot of. Montage. I mean, it feels like every time we go back, we cut back to this Mando, you know, covert that they grow in size. I mean, there's like about a hundred of them out there, which is quite impressive. But um, it's just yeah. I just imagined that like. It's just like calisthenics or something. Like the armor just comes out. She's like, doo, doo. all right, everybody out in the quad. We're doing half an hour of Mando training. And they're all just like, okay. Um, <laughs> but uh, well, I, I, I was expecting um, with Grogu uh, in his little fight there, I was expecting the whistling birds, but it turned out to be a paintball match. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's go to that. Look, so basically he. I, I am happy it was paintball. I was very worried there for a moment because Mandalorians are a bit full on. It's like, okay, training, okay. training, yeah. that's all right. So D Din goes, oh, all right. I wasn't happy with that. No? Well, Din goes. Oh, my God, I was having so much trauma. <laughs> he just goes, oh, yeah, Grogu's ready, to, Grogu's ready to train. So let's take him over to where the families are. And there's like two sort of grubby 11-year-old boys like wrestling. Like Turbo, you're probably having flashbacks to your own sons like wrestling in the, in their bedrooms or something where they're ready to like beat the crap out of each other. He just puts Grogu down. He's like, yep, he's ready to fight. Um, and I was going, are they gonna, is he going to get kicked in the face? <laughs> are we going to have to watch that? Is he going to get squashed or something? <laughs> you know, they're going to have a wrestle and he's going to get squashed. And oh, his yeah. little face, he wasn't happy about it. No. Oh, it was a bit, uh, yeah, perturbed by everything. I mean, they I was just so triggered because my dad's a judo instructor and that just felt like my childhood, like the hoofy son in the, <laughs> get the in there fight. Get in there boy. <laughs> get in there. And I can tell you it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least I, I won't look for you to protection if we get mugged or something down. I'm like, you did judo. You're like, no, I didn't. I just cried in the corner. I didn't want to be there. Exactly. <laughs> um. Yeah, well, Grogo was looking like, what are you doing to me, Dad? I'm not ready for this. I mean, fortunately, the, the instructor or whoever he is goes, I'll pick the one activity that involves no physical contact whatsoever. Um, yeah. And it was just like a yeah, little stare down. 
and Bo-Katan with a bit of a, okay, this is how you do it. You, you know, squeeze your hand and the encouraging words. So He's such a me. sweet stepmom, isn't she? Yeah. Nothing like putting a, you know, I know it was a training weapon, but putting a, a weapon on a three-year-old's hand and just, you know, strapping him into the, into the thing and going, all right, go for it. Um, here's a question, and I want everyone to answer this uh, individually. We'll start with you, Catherine. Is it appropriate for Grogu to use Jedi skills in Mandalorian training? If he's going to be a Mandalorian, shouldn't he be doing Mandalorian trainings? Isn't the Jedi stuff supposed to be done now? No, wasn't there a Jedi Mandalorian to begin with, like back in the yeah. old times? I forgot what was yeah. his name. Yeah, yeah, um, something Vizsla. Previous, yeah, one of the one of the Vizslas. Previous, yeah, Timmy Vizslas. Um, one of the Vizslas. <laughs> well, he's he's got to be able to do something because he's he's always got to be little. You know, why not? Like, I'm sure a Mandalorian would take advantage of any edge they could have. So, you know, him being able to do little leaps is, you know, advantageous for him. So, yeah, why not? uh, They're not just little leaps. They're actually pretty big leaps. (laughs) I mean, for his size, they're pretty big leaps. And, yes, I couldn't jump that high. What about you, Dale? You think think it's cool? I, 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 I... Yeah. I think it's pretty cool. Like, um, you know, as we said, there's been Jedi Mandalorian before. So one of them, I don't know which one it was. Mm. Barry, Robin, Andy, one of them. Turbo, you <laughs> Barry Vizsla. <laughs> <Vizla, buddy. laughs> Are you just naming the BGs then? <laughs> Barry, Robin, <laughs> Barry, Robin, <laughs> yeah. Andy. And who was the other one? Oh, there was, yeah. that was the brother as well, wasn't there? Um, <laughs> Turbo, you seem to not have a problem with this. I seem to be the only one who has a problem with this. You seem nah, to be cool with it. I'm all good with it. I think it's, I think it's on you. So is it just about my, like... My main concern is his helmet, how he's going to get that on his head and when that's happening and because that's the core of being a Mandalorian. Well, if you believe these guys, yeah. it is. Um, I mean, they definitely seem to be like leveling him up. They gave him a, a sh- like a wrist gun and then they gave him a new like chest plate. Um which we'll get back to in a minute. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess I suppose if you if you follow the, the creed, it doesn't really matter what you just use every advantage, to, every skill you have to your advantage, as you said, Catherine. Okay, yeah. I I just kind of thought that that was he was trying to move in, moving away from that, but yeah, okay. Um, but also in some ways it teaches the other foundling, um, you know, not to underestimate his op- opponent. Yeah, you know, the the he wasn't taking it easy on Grogu, but he definitely didn't think him capable of of anything. So you know, next time he faces an opponent, he probably won't make the same mistake. See, looking at it from a very teacherly point of view, or if he just faces Grogu, it's almost just... not like size matters not. Oh, just mm. take a running mm. kick and kick him across the pond or something, you know. <laughs> if it's that one particular fighting style where they have to stand away from each other and shoot projectiles, I mean, probably in any other fighting situation he might be in trouble, but yeah, maybe not. Did anyone else see a pop figure being quickly put together with paint paint uh, splatters <laughs> on it and a little <laughs> dark well, arm? That's the easiest thing we ever had to do. We just take the old Gruger one and put some paint splatters on it and sell it as a convention exclusive. Um. So then, yeah, the world's most dangerous place to have a hundred people hanging out on a beach. If it's not the giant, like snapping whale thing, as a few weeks ago, then it's the pterodact giant pterodactyls or what giant flying dinosaur thing swoops in. Um, yeah, and then sort of promptly grabs one of the kids and flies off. Anybody see that coming? No, no but it was it was Paz Vizsla's son, right? What yeah. was his name? Um... Yeah. You mentioned it once. Yeah, it that started happened. with an R. Um, and so it was the same kid who was taking the Cree, you know, a couple of weeks ago. But, yeah, I have to admit when they're going through, I'm like, I did say out loud, how dangerous is this planet? Why are you here? I... <laughs> well, especially there was a, a perfectly good, nicer planet that Bo-Katan was on before that, you know, had even had Mandalorian castles and things. But are they more like we don't want to hand, hang out in an obvious place because people will come looking for us if we're on the mandalorian planet um yeah but maybe no one will suspect that you're hiding there so that's why you hide there 
It's mm. true. Um, hmm. Did... Uh, oh, I've just lost my train of thought. Oh, the kid. Yeah, so obviously... If that's his kid, then there has been other Mandalorian families and stuff around for ages. So they haven't like I always felt it was implied that it was like Paz Vizsla and the Armor are like the only two left. You know, when he goes to visit them in Book of Boba yeah. Fett, you know, after all the other ones yeah. are all kind of get. So it means that they've actually been like sort of more gathering rather than recruiting. I think the it seems like they ha- that they were all just a bit more scattered again. Yeah, it could have just been there were only a select few on Navarro, but. Unless yeah, this is another John Favreau, there, you then know, it was ten like, years has passed or yeah. something again, and he's like, "Oh, Paz Vizsla had a kid, he had a ten-year-old in that time." Oh yeah, babies, <laughs> Mando babies. Yeah. I oh, speaking of Paz, Paz Vizsla. Um, I, I hear people saying that it's John Favreau this season, but I don't hear it, and I, I think it's a different voice this season. I've heard. Oh really? For Paz Vizsla, because I think for season one and two it was Johnny Favs voicing that as um as he did in the Clone Wars as well, but. I think it's a different. I think I read somewhere it's a different voice, and one of the theories is that they kind of recast him with a voice actor, maybe the physical actor who plays uh, Paz Vizsla. So maybe he'll take his helmet helmet off and have a have, uh, a, have a look at his face. That's interesting because yeah, so. it doesn't seem like it would be that I hard. Read that somewhere yeah. for John Favreau to do it because he could just do it like in his lunch break or something. Really, he's only got to read off a bunch of yeah. lines. He's True. there all the time. So. But it would it, it would be kind of funny, like with, you know, you rip off Paz, Paz's helmet and you see Johnny Favs there. It wouldn't... But they've done... Know, oh, no, that that's just the... Laugh, I think. Like I said, because there is a black that's series. That's the figure. But it is supposed to be John Favreau. That's Favre, the black series, yeah. It? Yeah, it's supposed... To, yeah, that was the yeah, crappy yeah. Ex- celebration exclusive last year that you couldn't get. They just got the happy home yeah, toy right. and yeah. stuck the stuck it on the existing Paz Vizsla one. Don't, don't get me started on that. Um yeah, so <laughs> essentially the pterodactyl swoops up, grab Paz Vizsla's son, and then flies off. And the um, the Mandos all sort of go in, go take chase with the jetpacks. And that was quite a cool sequence. And I don't know, this is the first time we've ever seen him run out of fuel. Yeah, it's the first yeah. I'd heard of it. That was that was something new. Well, you know what it is? It's the armor is just too busy like making new armor. Like she's she's burning it all. All the fuel's going. She <laughs> seems to have that thing lit lit all the time. I, I wouldn't not surprised it's all gone. If it's the same fuel, that is. Well, also maybe they don't carry an awful lot of fuel because you know it is flammable, so that might you know lead to explosions. So um, they haven't quite cracked maybe. renewable energy in the Star Wars galaxy, have they? Like, well, no. They've got like Broaxium they... or Coaxium. Sorry, Broaxium's the podcast. <laughs> Coaxium. <laughs> and uh, shout out to the Broaxium guys. Um, Coaxium. <laughs> and I think there's a bunch of other, like, they talk about fuel stuff as well. Like, yeah. you know, obviously, Tabana Gas feels like that's a that's a finite resource. Mm. Um, they haven't quite, yeah, cracked renewable energy. Doesn't doesn't Kyber have, Kyber crystals have a bit of energy? You know, yeah. Or not renewable, but, you yeah. know. Well, know. you know, this is the thing. They probably don't see the need for renewables because they're always able to find, like, new planets type of thing. There was that Bad Batch episode where them. they, you know, they were mining for the the energy in that as well. And, yeah. yeah, I guess it's Star Wars is sort of based on 70s tech. So if you kind of go, well, in the 70s, it was all just fossil fuels. So they're just burning. Yeah. Yeah. They're just burning fossil fuels. You know? like, I guess you could also, if you ruin the planet, you could just go to another one. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. There's plenty more. Look at Jeddah. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have that kind of uh, luxury here, guys. So if you could all just, you know, please keep your carbon emissions down, that would be great. Um, yeah. So they all fly off. They're all flying off in hot pursuit. And then one by one, the, the jetpacks kind of start to cark it. And, and, um, and then Bo-Katan, who is like all in on this whole thing, just shoots by in her starship. And um, the, the smartest one of them all went. Hmm, I'll follow in a in a plane. The I got, gauntlet. I got lots of yeah. fuel. So yeah. is she? What's it's going on here? Ship. Is she? Is she? In, is she? Is she bought in? Is she completely in, or is she just playing the long game here? I, I, I think I used the expression. I wouldn't trust her as far as I could throw her last week. But what are we thinking? Is she? I, just... I think she's. I think she's playing the long game. I, I think she's doesn't believe it in it yet but i think eventually she'll be converted in some sort of what surprising way um or at least not converted but the two sort of clans will kind of meet in the middle somehow like you know the children of the watch might take their helmets off every you know 
Saturday or something, you know, on the Sabbath, <laughs> or, you know, <laughs> yeah, they'll reach a sort of agreement, you know. The, Religions the, are really known for their the compromises hardcore. as well, too, aren't they, Turbo? <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't eat. Yeah, eat fish on a Friday. That's well, that's thing, true. You know. Yeah, that, that one's yeah, and they all lived happily ever after. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I don't know. What do you reckon, Dale? You reckon she's she's actually sort of, you know, getting deep on it, or do you think she's just sort of going? Yeah, along we with we've it? seen this story before. We know how it ends. It's. I think she's going to be, the doubter's going to be convinced and there will be some compromise and unity will occur. Goodness. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. But it's the Star Wars to, way. Yeah. I have to say though, like she's like, okay, a kid's in danger. It doesn't really matter what she believes in. She's like, yeah, she will want to protect the kid and save the kid, you know, mm. even if she doesn't believe in, you know, in the way or in what, know, what are they again? To... They're not Death Watch. I keep wanting to call them Death Children Watch. Children of the Watch. Children of the Watch. Yeah. Um, even if she's not all in on that, she'll be like, no, I'll, I'll help you save the kid, obviously. I don't know. It seems um, like a lot. But yeah. she went about it the smartest way in that hmm, giant pterodactyl. I'll take my my big plane. I don't Rather know, than just seems like, a little convenient little. to me, and then she got all the praise, was the highest honor to save a kid. I think she stuffed some stakes down that kid's dax or something. Was just waiting for the terror. You know, she had already <laughs> got the pterodactyl ready to <laughs> ready to strike. She's like, I'll get this kid, and then I'll save him, and then I'll be in the favor. I'll be at the highest honor. These, these clowns will follow me anywhere after this. It- so Josh Chapman at the whiteboard and at, with yeah. the red string, Charlie Day style. Yeah, well, you, you wait and see. She, she's too ambitious. She's got too much, too much ambitious ambition. I think. I think she still sees these people as a means to an end. But I could be wrong. But anyway, and I've so, got to say, Katie's crushing it in this role. It's um, yeah. she's really on point for the character. It's fantastic. A lot but, of helmet. But she's acting. like she's. Hold on. She's been pretty lonely, right? So she maybe she just wants friends. Who knows? Yeah. Just got no mates yep. sort of thing. It's pretty lonely on that sort of hard, you know, uncomfortable throne she has, <laughs> whatever it is. <laughs> um, so anyway, they go, all right, well, we know we've, she goes, I've, I figured out where the, where the giant bird is. Let's get a, let's get a gang together. We'll, um, we'll go down. We can't use our jet packs, but we'll get a little hunting group and they all take off. And, um, and Grogu, Hangs back, he can't go, and the armor says, "Oh, you know, come in, Grogu. We'll, uh, I'll, we'll start chit chat some Mandalorian." And she starts making stuff, and there's a sort of a bang bang thing going, and then all of a sudden, we get this big zoom in on Grogu's face, and we we get the flashback. Um, oh, yeah. So Here we we, go. we we flash back to the Jedi Temple, which I was when this episode started. I did not think that was where we were going, and I like I said, I was a bit kind of like cold on the episode to start there was a lot of helmet acting going on and i'm like you know is this really enough to sustain in a whole episode i know it's short but um we're in the jedi temple then the during the during order 66 and it was all happening um poor grogu was terrified like he got they kind of youngified so him a little bit too. He was a little bit more little around the face too yeah, yeah. T- little tinier ears i think as well his ears were smaller um, so he, he's so scared of the bang bang of the armor up, and then yeah, in the Jedi Temple, he was just so scared watching all of that poor little Grogu. So, it was that little shot that we saw in the trailer of the Jedi sort of at the door, and, and then the clone troopers come in? Uh, did anybody think we we're gonna get an Anakin Skywalker cameo at that moment? Yep, you no. did, yeah, no, I didn't. <laughs> Was that was that first part of the flashback in the trailer? I thought we actually saw it previously. In flashback. We, oh, they had shot. Didn't he have another had, flashback? Yeah, earlier? he did. But I don't know. I'll have to double check if that was the same shot or not. Because yeah, I felt like it, it, it was familiar. I don't know if it was the trailer or actual episode where it was flat. Had a had a very small flashback. Yeah. And yeah. this is just the extension of that. You know. Yeah, we saw flashback. something during the hyperspace bit. Didn't. Yeah. Or am I dreaming that? Yeah. Was anyway, that shot looked very familiar. It was like, yeah. Yeah. I would, it, we've definitely yeah. flashed back to the temple, you know, because everybody was like, well, he was in the temple. Who got him out of the temple? And the, the funny thing was that. It got yeah, Well, at the, the, it, this was that the, 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 there's some Jedi for sort of protecting him, and then a lift opens, and he goes into the lift, and I went. Oh, he's just going to save himself. <laughs> well, there is going to be, like there is not going to be anybody who saves him. He's just going to go up the lift and like float away, and that's going to be it. But uh, lo and behold, he gets in the lift, gets to the top floor, and the uh, the doors open. And who's waiting for him? Who wants to take this one? Catherine, do you want to? Talk- I'm in best. <laughs> 
You go, Catherine. You go. <laughs> oh my god! So Jar Jar Binks himself. I not stood Jar Jar up Binks. and screamed. I actually just was, I, I I audibly went, "Oh, well done." You know, I was actually like, oh, yeah, well, right. good on, well <laughs> done. Yeah, that's great. That's, good on you. Well deserved. Who's, who's going to begrudge that? That's He's back. So that is the character so that he, was... he played in the the show, the, the, the game. Kids, the kids the game show. Yeah, the game what, show, yep. Is it for sure that same Jedi? Yeah, Keller. Uh, Does the canon Keller fit up? I don't know something? what time period that show is supposed to be set in, but um He's got a little bit more great. I think he did a, it did a fantastic job, and it was so awesome to see those Jedi. Especially, I love seeing a Jedi with a blue and green lightsaber going for it at once. Yeah, yeah. Well, he was I, doing I, so good. Double wielding. Yeah, because yeah. I, I didn't catch his name in the end credits, like of who he played. But yeah, he had two lightsabers, so it's like, okay, we're going to make you a Jedi, and we're going to make you wield two lightsabers. Were like, they shorter Austin. lightsabers? They looked a bit shorter than normal. I don't know. Something. Well, I'm trying to think. In Clone Wars, when you know Ahsoka had two, there she was had one long one, one short one. One, you? yeah, there was Which like is, definitely like one a samurai shorter. thing. Because I'm playing Ghost of Shimura, yeah. Shimura again, and you've got like a long sword and a little sword. But um, there you go. I'm just going to stay quiet at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> now, also, the robes he wore did they look a bit High Republic to you? In that they had like the gold trim type of thing or am i just they did definitely I have, have to go go- back to see they, that they definitely had a gold trim in them so it was a bit of a fancy i don't know what his i'd have to check his wikipedia and see what he was whether he was a frontline jedi who was more of a scholar i have a feeling based on the game show he was more scholarly 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 yeah which yeah. might imply yeah. why he's got sort if, of like you know fancy robes i just looked at the Wiki- wikipedia page <laughs> and it is keller and beck the same guy so it says he's in the foundling Episode. Oh, geez, they don't, nice don't miss the same. They don't miss a beat, do they? The episode's only been out for a few hours, yeah. and someone's all over it. Yeah, yep. Got to love those train oh, spotters. That's great. Look, that that, that um, the Scott, the city of um, Coruscant was just looking fantastic, and you know, another speeder bike chase with the sidecar was fantastic. Well, this had a thing that I the actually, top of. The... Are you so turbo? You go, mate. Oh, no, I was going to say at the top of the mountain again. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. As, yeah. Nice yeah. Touch. Um, <laughs> Whatever that's called, but yeah. But this is one of the things that I've thought about, so I think, since Revenge of the Sith, actually. You know the scene in Revenge of the Sith uh, when Obi-Wan and Yoda meet up and they go, we're going to go to the temple because we're going to disable the message because it's telling all the Jedi to come back, basically. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they do that. And there's a scene before they find that Anakin's turned to the dark side and they're kind of like out the front of the building kind of killing co- clones and things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I always thought that was it. I'm just like, oh, they're just like out in public. Like, it's just like a city. Like, the rest of the city doesn't know what's going on. Like, as far as they know, this, the, the, mm. there's just like some weird scrap between the clone troopers and the Jedi out the front of the thing. And this was actually quite interesting because it, this actually like spilled out into the city. Like, they were being chased and there were people everywhere. And, you know, what does the public think of this? That there's the Jedi being chased down by the clone troopers that we've seen like together the whole time. I just thought that was quite fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, with, to the public, it would seem like, you know, something like the police are fighting like the, the army, army or something. Or the, yeah, it's just you know, like, yeah. this is weird. Yeah. Is anybody else That's a bit weird? <laughs> <laughs> um, but we do get another really cool moment where he goes, oh, I've got some friends. And um, we they pull up to a platform and it's Padme's Naboo fighter from Attack of the Clones. Attack of the Clones. Yeah. Oh, it, it was like it. It was at least it's, it was defi- at least it's Nubian. It was definitely the same. Yeah, Nubian for sure. Yeah. And Padme is alive you at know, this point you, in the film too. At, at, at this moment in yeah. time as well. I think you know who I yeah, thought we is. were going to see. I thought Jar Jar was going to walk down the steps. Honestly, I thought, oh, they're going to no. double Ahmed Best. It <laughs> Jar Jar's going to be the. I thought he was going to be like, I've got friends, and he'd literally be like. Oh, Misa, so happy to see you. And he's like, high five. You've always been my favorite. You know, let it be so... I'm like, just do it. Like, let's roll. Let's double arm edit. Oh, that would be, that would be too much. I... Josh, that's your next T-shirt. The two of them high-fiving each other. <laughs> Look, I went I went there in my brain. I thought, are we going to see Natalie Portman? Oh, I didn't even think you know, that. doing little messy. Where was she yeah, right I didn't, now? I didn't think that. Yeah. Where was she? No, she was on Mustafar then, by then, wasn't she? 
Or no, like no, during she the was attack, in the, she was looking at the, through the apartment with three PO. Yeah. Oh, you're yeah. right. Yeah, that probably wouldn't well, have quite make yeah. sense because uh maybe not. Maybe she could have just been like, "I'll help the Jedi," and now I've got to go find Anakin. I'm worried he's in danger. I- blah blah blah. Because yeah, because Obi Wan comes yeah. back from there and says, "Hey, look at all the crappy stuff that Anakin's done." Yeah. Ah, oh, Mister Trick. Do you reckon? Do you reckon they might, have, you reckon they, they might have thought? They might have originally thought about that, and they just set up everything, and they're like, "We're just I'm, waiting for Natalie to call back," and she never I'm did. I'm sure they thought about it. I'm sure. <laughs> Let's face it; she's been in the the volume somewhat recently with Thor: Love and Thunder. Like, Ty, they could, could you have called up Tyker and say, "Hey, Tyker, can you do us a favor?" <laughs> and to be honest, she she looks the same age, almost, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. as she does now. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Put put a curly long wig on her and stuck a basketball up her jumper and yeah. and done it and just yeah. Or oh, even now, I just feel like, like they've missed a trick. Now I just feel like they've missed a trick and they they should have done it. Look, uh, it's I'm, convoluting the plot a bit, but yeah. hey, it'd be, it'd be oh, nice. Just do if, it. I, I'm sorry, I've put the thought out there now, but um. Yeah, like even if it was like a hologram, because that would be also easier to like fudge around. Um, they of, don't seem to care about sorry. authenticity. If you have, if you've noticed, um, Qui Gon Jinn's um, little cameo at the end of Kenobi, which was <laughs> clearly like a man fifty years older, in a different wig. <laughs> the Force works in mysterious ways, Dale. You should know that. Yeah. Um, oh man, yeah, that would have been so, awesome. so does the hairdressing. It should have been Jar Jar and Natalie po- and Pad- and Amidala. Anyway, but um, they get on the ship and they get away. So at this point, Ahmed Best and Grogu, maybe they're hiding out for the next twenty years, ten years, hiding somewhere. Like, where's that spin off? Oh, now you're talking. Naboo. They they got to be on Naboo. The Naboo years. Yep. Not the Wonder years. <laughs> Oh, wow. It, does, it really uh, does open up a whole bunch of possibilities, doesn't it, really? <laughs> yeah. But I don't know if you were thinking this as well. I mean, I was just so emotional when I saw him coming out and it was like I was crying. I was so happy for him, like like Ahmed getting this fantastic role. It was like he saved Grogu, like the franchise's most beloved character saved by Jar Jar Binks. And he's been embraced by fandom a lot in the last few years, but can you imagine if he comes out at Celebration? The yeah, fan there's another whole level, isn't yeah. there, really? Um, and it does imply oh, that... See, I, I... Go for it, mate. I was going to say, I, I, I had to explain the whole Ahmed Best thing to my son, Luke, after the after after watching it, because like, he's obviously seen the prequels, but he didn't know all the issues that people had with Jar Jar at the time. And he said, really? What? Why are they hassling him about Jar Jar? Like he didn't, he did have no clue that there was this absolutely hated character. So, like, well, back in the late um, 90s, and, fandom yeah, was really mean. You know, not like now. <laughs> yeah. <it's> really, yeah. <laughs> um, it does imply that they've got a prior relationship as well. So he, it could have been that he was like his protector or looked after him in general. That you know, because he, he he purposely looked like that they went to get he went to save him particularly. And get him out of there. It wasn't like I, he was just walking I past. Thought, I thought he was there to like save as many younglings as he could because the um, Naboo officer asked him, oh, you know, I think was it like oh, where are the rest of them or something? Yeah, yeah. And and um, Ahmed Best said, oh, there weren't any. Well, his character in the game show is like training young Jedi to do yeah. skills. So yeah. it is implied that he works with the, not the foundlings or whatever they are, the apprentices or the, the Padawans, young sorry, there's yeah. a word. Um, so yeah, it kind of, it does, it makes perfect sense really. Um, and well, I've, I haven't really like looked at it. Who knew but... with that game show? Who knew? Yeah. But it, it does open up or endless possibilities as well. Like you think, you know, um, Grogu could, could show up in that Jedi survivor game or the, I'm a best character could as well, you know, like because obviously, I think they need to know, go all in now. Poss- I would, I would, you know, animated series. Yeah, was or... that the re- the the game was delayed? Was that the real reason? Because the game was only delayed oh, yeah. like a month. Oh, conspiracy! Here we go. Like, and you go, oh, you know, they say, oh, because we want to work on it, and you know, I don't 
really know how much, but it's like, how much can you really do in a month? You've only given yourself a month extra. So seriously, was this one of the reasons why it was delayed a month? I've planted a seed. Sorry, uh, Catherine. Well, we'll find out. You're going to have to buy a PlayStation <laughs> 5 down. Yes, you're as well. <laughs> you're going to have to play a PlayStation 5 and, and play it and find out. Or you could just watch the you know, <laughs> cut scenes on YouTube like most people do. Yeah, I'll watch. Um, so, yeah, very, very cool. Um, and then we get this... I was you know, talking before about moments just made me laugh out loud, the ridiculousness. Um, the armorer like, makes a metal plate for, for Grogu of the the mud horn insignia um and then basically it's, it's like huge it's like the size of his chest it's this huge big thing and she just like sticks it on his chest it looks so ridiculous it was just like he had this it was like he was flavor yeah. flav wearing a clock or something like it was so <laughs> silly and i just laughed and went that is so dumb but all right let's just roll with it like this this is the episode to roll it- yeah, I was I was wondering that. How does it stick? Like, it looked like it had. Some How does he of walk around with that thing stuck to his chest? Like, he's just gonna fall flat on his face. It must be. Yeah, he's gonna be top heavy. Yeah, <laughs> it just walks and goes. <laughs> just fall like, oh, really didn't think this one through. Like, just make him a little thing to put on his shoulder or something. But um, anyway, um, but we cut back to the uh, the hunting party, and they're looking for the they're looking for the pterodactyl. And they're having this little camp out, and um, it was quite funny because they all get like get given their lunch, and Boca Town asks a very reasonable question, which is like, like how do we eat when everyone's sitting around? Like how does this work? Um, and what more importantly, it? how do they shit? <laughs> <laughs> well, like well, I think they could do that buns. in front of everybody. I don't think it matters because you can't you're not <laughs> looking each other in the eye. They're like, oh no, when we well, basically it was you got to go find a, a private spot to eat and take your helmet off. Maybe they just go, oh no, no, we poo in front of each other. That's fine because we've got our helmets on. It doesn't. It's not embarrassing. Like what, what difference does it make? But no, we can't. We can't eat because we've got to keep the helmet on. Um, but, Lots uh, of soups through straws. Yeah, and so. <laughs> Bo-Katan sort of gets to, because she's the leader of the hunting party, she gets to stay at the fire and takes the helmet off. And even that, I was kind of like, I didn't realize that you could just take your helmet off when no one's around. I kind of just, but I guess that makes sense, doesn't it? Well, at least it implies that you can oh, sleep mentioned- and you can eat and do other stuff in private and have your helmet off. Yeah. Which makes life a yeah, little bit more Yeah, it's a difference tolerable. between have you, have you taken your helmet off versus has someone seen you with a helmet off? But that's what they 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 did in the first couple of seasons. He was allowed to take it off as long as no one saw him. Yeah, I mean, I know he's done the lift up and kind of the lift and shove the food under the thing. But um... yeah. well, in that um, episode in the first season when he's in the village, he was he ate alone in like the barn thing yeah, where no yeah. one could could see him, um, and also. The episode, uh, oh, with IG Eleven, where I, IG Eleven yeah. looked at him, but he wasn't human. So, did yeah. is it okay if a droid sees him? So, yeah. yeah, no living person sees his face. I think was the loophole. Yeah, this is and, where these rules are meant yeah. to be kind of broken. You know, just bend the rules a, a bit. The technicalities it's fine. here. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> so yeah, so Bo-Katan sort of take. I don't know. Like she sort of took the, the helmet off, and it was a bit sort of. I don't know. The expression was a bit kind of uh, like I don't. I don't know. Did anybody else? Am I reading too much into that, Dale? What do you reckon? Does she look kind of? Yeah, that's what it feels like if I'm camping too. It's like, oh, this is shit. <laughs> <laughs> Where's a soft bed? Having tin beans and yeah, sleeping on yeah. a flat lilo. <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. Um, but they uh, they get up, they scale the mountain, and um get up to the nest and I don't know why this kid hasn't been eaten. It's been like a day. I I was thinking that the whole time of why is this, the kid still alive? Like surely you're taking it back to the nest and eating the child pretty, you know, day of like immediately. Like yeah, it's a it's, grim it's thought, stewing. but I was it's wondering. Not, it. Yeah. It's not like it's got a rest. It's not a steak. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, it would be hard to digest the, yeah, you know, the best car though. So maybe that's that's the. You got to g yourself up for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but 
because they kind of they, they do the scan on the nest and they're like oh there's a, there's a body there's like warmth or heat over there and they and they he kind of Paz Vizsla or whatever whatever Vizsla he is he just gets completely ahead of himself and just bumbles in and there's some baby birds in there who all sort of jump up which is you know quite cool I don't know if they were animatronics or not but um but does the bird show up and it's still got the kid like was it the kid in the nest it seemed yeah. like the bird turned yeah. up and so it wasn't the kid in the nest. No, that was just no, some the other. Bird, the, no, the kid no. was in the in his oh, the, mouth. Was the warmth yeah. the bird or the belly? Yeah, like yeah. the belly. It was in the belly of the whale, kind of effectively, you know, yeah. just digesting slowly. Got regurgitated <laughs> up again to be um, eaten by the um, babies because that's what happens in the natural world here with yeah. a lot of yeah. birds and things. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then they sort of have a bit of a rumble. And I don't know. I did anybody else feel bad for the bird that they they killed the yep. bird once it was turned out that yep. it had babies? I was a bit like, yes. do we need to kill it? They kind of they got the got the kid back and there's some good jetpacking going on. And the bird fell into the water and then the big whale thing ate it up. My immediate thing was, well, what about the babies? The you know, what about the babies? You know, me going, oh, looks like leaving three kittens without a mother. Like, what what are you doing? But they then. Covered their bases and are going to take care of the babies. House of Dragon style. Yeah, they're going yeah. to ride them or something. Mm-hmm. I don't like. I feel like there's enough unpredictable animals around. They're just sort of, yeah. All right. I, some weird. Some weird. So there were some weird choices those Mandalorians. But anyway. Um. Ah, oh, look. I I thought it was a pretty. It was a fun episode. I mean, obviously the the flashback stuff was great. The other stuff. You know, there was a little bit of interest in there. Actually, no, we probably I, I forget there was actually a little sting at the end where Bo Katan goes in to get her armor fixed, and she's just like, "Hey, I want a Mandalorian on one arm, um, or no, a Mythosaur on one arm," and she yeah. basically tells the armor that she saw the Mythosaur. Um, it doesn't really seem to believe her though. And the armor thought she was like tripping or something, you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> even acid fl- flashback. Yeah, yeah. Well, even when she was kind of like, "Oh, it wasn't a vision; it was real," I think she was still a bit sort of like. Whatever you say, George Ann. Yeah. yeah, but um, it does sort of imply that she's getting a bit more hardcore, Bo-Katan. I just don't trust yeah, her. Though she's thinking about the implications of having seen Mythosaur. Yep. Josh, why don't you we'll... ask her at Supernova? She's turning up. Emily Swallow is. No, Katie Sackoff. Oh, is she? Oh, that's cool. Um, all right, maybe. <laughs> I probably just want to talk like Battlestar Spill, Galactica spill all the secrets well. Yeah um, oh, I like Katie Sackhoff But yeah A lot of helmet acting though Which is you know, Not easy to do But um, Yeah look I thought the you know, The dinosaur plot Was perfectly fine But obviously The um, the flashbacks Was the star of the show Whatever else I reckon Turbo Let's start with you mate well, I'll, Yeah I'll say um, I enjoyed this Probably the I probably had the most fun out of all the episodes so far. I had my issues with the, obviously the first episode, you probably didn't want to hear me talk about that, but um, <laughs> it's, it's getting a lot better. I'm, I'm sort of adjusting to the fact that it's no and or, and sort of getting into the groove a bit. So I don't know. I, I kind of liked the fact that this was short and sweet as well. It didn't drag on. Um, yeah. It was just a fun episode. I thought it wasn't the best episode, but uh, I, I, I thought it was uh, short and sweet. How about you, Dale? Yeah, I think the um, the the length of the episode served the story. Um, it was fairly simple, and and it was a good place to put that flashback to get that good chunk of time from the flashback. Uh, I'm curious when we get the next installment of the flashback. Uh, are we going to get something that, that leads up in the future episodes, or is that it for the season? And we're just going to be slowly teased. Um, who can tell? Yeah, uh, whether they imply that, like I said, he, Ahmed Best and, and Grogu have a you know, a relationship that goes for 10 years or, you know, up until recently through the galactic war, they're in hiding the whole time or, or what it is, or yeah. I, I don't know, like doesn't bode well for Ahmed best. I hate to say it, but at least he made it out of the temple. At least he's got a little bit more time, but the, yeah. The, and I wouldn't get, put it, I wouldn't put it past them to make that uh, like a little tease to a future series or movie, anything really. Cause you know, everyone loves Grogu. That's true. I guess that leads into the, the next mystery, which is who captured Grogu in the lead up to the first Mando episode. Like, yeah. Why was he in that that place with the 
Was it Trend Oceans? I can't remember who it was. But, yeah. Um, yeah, what happens? Yeah, I which think so. Implies that yeah, if they're together that whole time and then something something's gone down, um, we'll have to have to see. But uh, what about you, Catherine? I mean, the flashback was. You know, it was great to see for Grogu, but also yes, to see um, at best the um, Mando story. Uh, you know, I, I fully me. Even though in my head I'm like, oh, they're not going to kill the kid, are they? I thought, you know, maybe we get there and the kid is dead. But once the kid was alive, it's like, okay, it's unlikely the kid might die, but maybe the, you know, Paz Fizzler, he might get it. Um, but it sounds awful. It was but fun. It was like that bit was a, fun. This is sounds bad. It, it might have been a. I don't want to kill kids in Star Wars, but. If that had happened and Bo-Katan had failed and then you get the friction between them, like Paz Viz, you know what I mean? Like that yeah. actually would have been an interesting thing to happen that it's sort of like she's getting more in and all of a sudden, you know, he's against her and there's a factional sort of thing and I don't know. But anyway, maybe that'll come later on. But um, yeah, sorry, Catherine, I just cut, cut you off there, but uh, reasonably uh, happy. That's right. Yep. Yep. Excellent. Excellent. Um, had a cry. Yeah. <laughs> had a cry. <laughs> Catherine approved. Catherine crying approved. Um, I think we'll just quickly circle around a celebration talk because we've got Turbo here and he is coming to celebration. Sorry, Dale. You're going to have to listen about yeah. this a little bit. But um, I um, I just got a quick celebration story, which is that about five minutes after we recorded the episode <laughs> last week and I signed off everybody and said, see you, see you all next week. Uh, my phone went off and I'm like, oh, I've got a text message. Like, that's weird. Who's texting me at like 10 o'clock at night? And it was Airbnb. And uh, Airbnb were like, hey, you know that accommodation that you booked six months, seven months ago? Months and months ago. It's uh, cancelled. <laughs> so you've got nowhere to stay for celebration now. <laughs> <laughs> um, which was really helpful. And then I was basically in a quandary of going, do I – try and deal with this right now at 10 o'clock at night or do I go to bed and I sleep on it? Um, and do I tell Catherine and how do I, what do I do about this? <laughs> because I don't want her to worry. Uh, but what I basically decided was what I'll do is I'll jump online, see if I can find something that works. Um, and obviously it's going to cost more money, but the last place we got was actually really, really cheap. And and you know, this is pretty much standard for London. Uh, so I found somewhere that I thought would work and then I called Catherine and said, I think I said, I don't want you to panic. I'm sure you're just like, why are you texting me at 10.30 at night? Yeah. Because my first thought was, as I said to you on the phone, was, oh, did my audio work out? Um, and you're like, oh, yeah, that's fine. Now, Catherine, everything's fine. Don't panic. It's all, all okay. And while well, my brain's just going, Woo, what's wrong? Um, yes. <laughs> I, I was thinking of, yes. of just rebooking the whole thing and just not telling you or just giving you another dress. But obviously, like, there was, it was going to cost more and all that kind of stuff. So I didn't want you to be like, hey, man, yeah. you said it was only going to cost this much and now it's this much. What's going on? Like, hey, what are you trying to push on us? Um, I'm like my favorite <laughs> character. I'm like, meh. Um, so anyway, we, we managed to stay in the same area. We're, like, we're just, rather than being a sort of couple of streets across, we're a couple of streets up. We're right in the same area in Hackney. So we're still near where the Scruffies are and we're near where you're going to be, Turbo, and I think Andy as well. So we'll all still be able to go to my favourite pub hopefully one night and, and do all of that. And and um, we actually get to walk down yeah, the main I'm... shops of Hackney now. So we'll go past the Marks and Spencers, get a nice sandwich for the day. It'll be, it'll be good. I was going to say, yeah, I'm, I'm a bit further away, but closer to central London. Um, yep. And I'm actually staying... About three minute walk from the Barbican, which is the uh, Andor filming location for um, um, those, I guess, Coruscant. Um, yeah, yeah. So really um, cool the areas. Cyril Khan's mum. Barbican's such a bizarre yeah. place where they just were like, "We're going to do this crazy brutalist architecture in the middle of London." Yeah, yeah. In the seventies or sixties or seventies, whatever it was. Um, the other thing that happened with Celebration, which uh, they've never done before, at least the ones that we've gone to is that they've gone and added an extra panel on the lottery, like out of nowhere in the middle of the week. Um, an email kind of came out and said, hey, you know that Obi-Wan panel that inexplicably isn't one of the big panels? Um, it's now going to have a lottery on it. So you've got to go apply to go in, which uh, 
I'm not surprised, but it was kind of weird that it, it wasn't an 11 o'clock panel all along, really. Yeah. Did they always have, it was always going to be um, Ewan there? Or, yeah, I think one? it was or always it Ewan. Is, it, and yeah. it was Ewan and Hayden talking to <clears throat> Obi-Wan. Um, mm. But I mean, the thing is, like, a lot of stuff goes on at Celebration. It might have just literally been they can't come at 11 o'clock. They can only come from talk for an hour at one thirty on this day. Mm. So that's when it is. And they will go, oh, well, well, all the lottery panels are the 11 o'clock ones, so that's what they are. And then I think they kind of got the idea that there might have been a little bit of chaos if they just let people queue up for that one. Yeah, you'd imagine Hayden and Ewan are the sort of biggest selling points there, and I think that there'd be some queues there. So um, they probably have to manage that. Yeah. Yeah. So no lottery for the no other disrespect, ones, so. no disrespect to Andor, Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Like, is that, I'm getting is that better or something. worse, Catherine? If if there'd been a lottery for Andor, I suppose it depends if you get in or not. Like, it'd be nice well, not to yeah. have to worry about it, but at the same time, if you didn't get in, you'd be like, oh. Well, great, now I've got to try and beg someone who's got one to get me in. Yeah, so... Or Matt Mullet, pay someone. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that means that for... Because that's the Friday afternoon, 3 o'clock, I think. I can't remember exactly now. Um, yeah, I've, I'll be either... So if, I, I'll be in the celebration stage as soon as I can to sort of make sure I've got a seat or queuing, sitting outside. Like that's, that's my Friday. Um, so definitely take a sandwich. You know, yeah. Uh, you know, or, or I'll be texting you going, hey, Josh, can you bring me a Coke? Uh, <laughs> you know what the funny thing is? The thing that I've, I've, I've just occurred to me that's, that I think will be really cool is that um, there's going to be a group of very dedicated Andor fans who are going to be queuing up to get into that panel as soon as possible. Mm. Um, and you are going to be amongst your people in a big, bad way. You're probably going to be like, hey, man, I've never been around such hardcore Andor fans. <laughs> like, you know, we were all Andor fans, but the people who queuing up to get into that panel and, you know, putting their day aside, you won't be the only one. Um, I think people will recognize Catherine as well. There'll be some people that, oh, Catherine, yes. That's the Andor sure, lady. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> what it's uh the lady who played what's her name on that like no 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 not her not someone from the show uh not um uh, you know not mon mothma um so anyway i think that's good i, I don't think there's any issue that people start getting their badges which is cool uh speaking of andor andor is the sunday badge is that right sunday or monday sunday yes sunday um yeah. i've got a four-day badge yes, so i sunday. don't get that one but I, a lot of people have got day badges so i'm i'm sure you'll be able to get one uh, for the collection, yeah, Catherine, you can you can have my my pass, my Andor pass, if you like. Thank you. <laughs> if you like, you don't have to. If you don't want to, if you like, it's only if you really want it. <laughs> um, just also as a footnote to that, if you're listening, um, our buddy <clears throat> Sean Hoffman has done this amazing little website uh, that lists all the panels in a very easy way to find and sort stuff. Way easier than the celebration site was. And I think it's SWC dot events. And just type that into your browser or yeah. just, I think I've tweeted about it and I think a couple of people have too, or just get Sean at, I think Ice Planet Hoff, I think is his Twitter and he'll get you the link, but that's yeah. going to be very helpful at Celebration. Bookmark that and it'll be very, very handy to do that. Yeah, swc.events. Excelente. Um, well, thank you guys for coming in, mixing it up. It's good to, good to have you on Turbo. Good to chat. You know, we'll see you... Uh, in a, cu- in a couple of weeks anyway, probably see yeah. you in, in London. Yeah. Um, I did see you in Melbourne yeah, we'll, not that long ago. We'll be but... jet lagged. We'll be jet lagged and um, I'm sure we'll meet at the pub for a pint and yep. continue with the <laughs> getting over the jet lag and then <laughs> ready for the next day at celebration. I know, it's going to be cool. Um, Dale, always a pleasure, mate. We might see you back next I mean, you're all welcome to come back next week anyway, like this, like a goodbye, who knows. Who, if everyone's free, just come back next week. But uh, Dale, uh, anything you want to plug, mate? So you talk about the, much, the Aster, uh, the Return of the Jedi Aster. Yeah, so. we've got um, Return of the Jedi 40th Anniversary Sunday, the 30th of April at the Astor at 2 p.m. So the Rebel Legion will be there in costume. Turn up, it's in 35 millimeter, so it look fantastic on the big screen there. And then on the 6th of May on the Saturday, there is a marathon of all 11 films. Oh, dear God. I, That's a I think I'm going to pop in for Revenge of the Sith, though. 
Those Astor seats aren't very Astor comfortable seats. either. Mm. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you can do it for but a single film. You can do it, exactly. <laughs> well, I, I th- I'm going to take Olive to Return of the Jedi. That's the plan. So we, we are planning to be there. Um, she sounds pretty keen. Um, Catherine, anything you want to plug? Uh, no, I haven't figured out what to do with Zencaster now um, <laughs> on that geek pod. Now that Zencaster is... Uh, Anyway, and also Celebration is rapidly approaching, so I'll probably be heard on blog pods and I'm, I'm sure I'll lose my little mind at various stages and cry a lot from exhaustion and and, and or. That's what everyone's counting on. I'm going to get those downloads. And I'll be on Beanie Watch on the live stream. <laughs> yep, the Bennies are, are there, so they're almost all accounted for. I honestly think I'm not going to have many left to give out at all unless... Uh, someone really famous wants one. I think Christina Ariel, <laughs> who does High Republic show, has imp- expressed interest, so I might put one aside for her if I can get it near her. Um, so there's a few, but everybody in this room has got their bees accounted for, so you're all okay. Um, awesome. Well, thanks, everybody. Um, thanks, we'll, Josh. We'll see you next week. Bye. Next Bye. Bye. Bye.